You are listening to another Always Moto production. The Always Moto Podcast with your host, David Hogan. We talk moto events from around the world. All the injuries, all the training ins and outs, the bikes, parts and gear inspections. The results, we interview your favourite riders. It's the Always Moto Podcast. We occasionally have some coarse language and the odd stuff up along the way. If you don't like it or you don't agree with us, turn it off right now. I'd like to remind you that he is not a doctor. That's right, Moto fans, I'm not a doctor, but I am a physiotherapist, and this is episode 94 of the Always Moto podcast, brought to you by Lee at Moto Australia. As always, I'm your host, David Hogan. Uh, We're going to be joined later in the show by a couple of different guests, and we'll get to them when they come through. The Always Moto podcast, we are in the depths of the clinic, throwing strapping tape anywhere it will stick, because that's what physios do, apparently. As always on the show, we'll be going through all things injury and moto, particularly the injuries in our sport, because hashtag injuries are a part of moto this week's show we're going to review san diego another mud race not as bad as san fran but it was still muddy the results the injuries and yes like i said the mud again the emergency department updates we have a few um this week unlike last week with that big sloppy mud of san francisco basically meant that nobody hurt themselves when they fell off because they just landed in a puddle of water this week the mud was a bit different it was a bit tackier um the speeds were up like we talked about when the speeds go down injuries are less speeds were back up a little bit more this time so there was a few particularly press day brought about some issues that with that dry track where they were actually on pace so that was an interesting one so there's a few there in that emergency department and this week as always um we we're meant to do well we're going to try and do this today uh but as always our recording is not always in a straight line so we're going to have our record tomorrow morning i'm recording late on a wednesday night here uh so thursday morning um it's aussie time we're going to have a record hopefully so if it doesn't pop up later in the show you'll see you'll know why do we sort of missed out on it but we're hoping to catch up with uh the number 464 on privateer gas gas in the 250 class he's made two out of three night shows so far this year uh it's going to be doc smith we're catching up with so hopefully we can check in with him about how he's been going through all the mud and how privateer life in california has been keeping uh, treating doc there so we'll check in with doc smith as well so that should be pretty cool Hey, Moto fans, this episode is brought to you by Liat Moto Australia, the ultimate gear and protection solution for riders seeking top-notch safety and style. From head to toe, Liat Moto has you covered with innovative helmets, goggles, body armor, and much, much more. Ride with confidence knowing you're backed by gear designed by riders for riders. Head over to liat.com.au and gear up for your next ride. All right, we're going to get some of these other um, sponsor reads out throughout the show, so keep an eye on those things, but we're going to make sure we mention right now our merchandise we need to get some of these t-shirt sales done guys and girls get yourself a t-shirt to rocket your next race they're 25 dollars plus postage and handling uh, you can get yours by emailing info at alwaysmoto.com put t-shirt order in the subject line and we'll get in touch by payment via paypal now using that paypal um, much like everybody else uses patreon we just got the paypal account set up as a donation point to keep this show on the road uh, if you send in a donation via that paypal it helps us immensely uh, and we will get you some little goodies sent out as well once we get those things coming through um, so please check out the links in the show notes or in our bios on the social pages you'll find all the show supporters we'll get some more of these reads out throughout the show so be sure to check them out as we go through uh, but check those links out they'll get you straight to those pages there's special discount codes with most of these places we'll, you'll hear them throughout the podcast um, but yeah get those t-shirt orders in get a donation to the show Check out leatmoto.com.au uh, and let's jump into the main part of the show. Hey, it's Jake Runkles and you're listening to the Always Moto Podcast. All right, let's run this thing off the ground. Boys and girls, welcome to the Always Moto Podcast. It's been another race weekend at the AMA Supercross. Uh, San Diego was run yeah. Another mud round. It's amazing that California, the place that supposedly doesn't rain, has rained twice in two weeks for the events that have been occurring. San Francisco obviously was a water puddle um, or a swimming pool, 
maybe an Olympic size pool. San Fr- San Diego, not so bad, but still bad enough that you know it's not a regular race track. It was sloppy, slippery. We had guys getting lapped. We had so many lapped riders. It was not funny. I ha- well, it was funny actually because it has to laugh. So many of people in that motocross and supercross fight club group on social media on Facebook. Uh, last week we're giving it to Jet because obviously he'd won the opening round and then got lapped in the mud uh, in San Francisco and they were all sort of jumping on the bandwagon that Jet, you know, wasn't as good as they all thought he was. But guess what happened the week after? Chase Sexton got lapped. Eli Tomac got lapped. Ken Roxon got lapped. Uh, there was quite a few guys getting lapped um, this season and, yeah, just it just sort of shows – goes to show that it goes around, comes around sort of situation. But, yeah – the big winner from San Diego in the mud, and I mentioned last week, was it lucky or just, you know, mud luck, a good rider or not? Well, Aaron Plessinger, good mud rider apparently, got it done. But in all of this, it is a bit of luck involved. Like I said last week, goggle malfunctions, you know, starts, you know, ability to pick a line around a lapped rider that's fallen down, all that sort of stuff is just a bit of luck in a mud race. But AP7, he got that win that he fi- that he threw away in Detroit. He finally did it. He's got the monkey off the back. Will that mean he has more in the tank? I don't know. We'll have to see how he performs in a dry situation. But maybe if there's another moist situation, we say moist, uh, maybe he gets it done. But... AP7, a race winner in the 450 class in AMA Supercross. So pretty impressive there for Aaron Plessinger and KTM and Jay Dungey, first 450 Supercross win for his mechanic, Jay Dungey, as well. Now, quite um, not quite the list that his brother Ryan has there, but uh, at least he's got one. He's working on, on two now. So we'll see how that all works out for him. So well done to Aaron Plessinger. Nate Thrasher was the winner in the 250 class. Uh, good work for Nate. He managed to work his way through the pack. Obviously, a few different leaders in that event there, uh, RJ Hampshire, Garrett Marchbanks. Um, but Nate managed to be the one on the final lap taking the checkered flag. Now, Garrett Marchbanks was probably a little unlucky to not get that win. That one little moment with the lap rider where he sort of had to get stood up in the rut, uh, lost a little bit of time, let Nate get to him and ultimately make the pass. Without that happening, I don't feel like Garrett loses that race. Um, But again, this is what I was saying before. The luck aspect of the mud race comes into it. Yes, Garrett was riding really well. Yes, he was a good mud rider. There's an aspect of luck. He caught a lapper in a deep rut that he couldn't just move out of as simply as he thought. He thought the lapper was going to progress through the rut better than he did. He didn't. He hit the back of him, had a little bit of contact, stood him up, stopped him for a couple of seconds. That's all it took for Thrasher to get to the back of him and then be able to make a move on him, I think, almost in the next lane, uh, if I remember correctly. So, yeah, look, Nate Thrasher got it done. Garrett Marchbanks, um, it was a bit of, again, a bit of a sloppy round for Shimoda, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, still not the start to the season that we would expect from the new HRC rider there. But, um, yeah, just a bit of a... Bit of an interesting round. Now, if we go on the interesting side of things, there's a few different aspects and obviously lots of the media outlets have touched on these things in terms of the Chase Sexton being lapped by Cooper Webb or passed by Cooper Webb when lapped and they made contact. I think that was a little bit of a racing incident. Both sort of are a little bit at fault there. The track's a little bit at fault. Again, the mud and the luck conversation. But I think Chase thought he was going to get through that corner a lot quicker than he actually did and or that he wasn't expecting Cooper to maybe go that inside line. So I think that was just a bit of a racing incident. Yes, he probably could have made more of an effort to get out of the way sooner. But he's in a in a chase for the title, hunt. He's trying to make points. He's trying to not lose too much time on that track and trying to boost himself up one or two more positions. So I can see what his point of view is, but I can also see Cooper's. So that one was there. The interesting one for me is the fact that Eli Tomac managed to run pace behind Aaron Plessinger. Now, here's an interesting thought that I don't think anybody else has sort of mentioned. Yes, he was right behind Aaron Plessinger and potentially blocking, roosting his teammate in, in second place in Cooper Webb. But what happens here to Eli Tomac, say, if by pushing, putting, riding behind Aaron Plessinger for that, you know, three, four laps, whatever it was, He's obviously getting blue flags because he's lapped and he's going to have Cooper right behind him who was only a second or so behind him. So he should have moved over for him. 
But if he's riding right behind Aaron Plessinger and forces Aaron Plessinger into a mistake because he's mistaken Aaron uh, Eli for Cooper and th- Aaron throws that win away, is Eli in trouble for not obeying blue flags? Or is it seen as Aaron just made a mistake? That's a different take on all of this that I don't know if anybody else has thought of. And maybe that's not that's something that needs to be addressed because you can't just have a lapped rider sitting between first and second for multiple laps and potentially pressuring first place and you know trying to unlap themselves in a supercross race like that i don't think that you're not going to unlap yourself and then get yourself back up to a point where you can you know podium win that race that's pretty rarely never going to happen um I think there needs to be a bit more of an effort for these guys to be moved out of the racing line. And maybe that comes down to the, you know, like a central communication point in the helmets by a race control that says, you know, press a button, you're talking to the number three Yamaha, press another button, you're talking to the number seven, um, you know, KTM. And you're informing them that, you know, Eli Tomac, please move to the left of track. You are being lapped. Uh, failure to do so result in a you know 10 second stop go penalty in the pit lane um or aaron, aaron plessinger the rider behind you is actually lapped please um disregard the the rider behind you or something along those lines do you know what i mean i think the first option you don't want to be talking to aaron telling him there's a lap rider on his ass that'll just get him flustered but you should be definitely talking to the lap rider telling him to get out of the way and failure to do so within a lap will result in like a you know a stop go penalty or something so something that they could consider here um suggestions from the always moto podcast all right let's um let's get into the other controversy and a bit of a wtf all around um it's gone from one point of escalation to another this week thanks to social media social media is a great application when you used correctly but sometimes in recent past writers have maybe gone on and had a little too much to say or a little bit of a you know passive aggressive move towards other people now I don't really care for either points of view on this one. Um, it should have been just a gentleman's agreement between the two of them post-race to when they've cooled down that it was a bit of a stupid idea on both their parts. But the Jet Lawrence, Jason Anderson situation seems to be continuing to you know, grow legs and move somewhere. Obviously, Jet was unhappy with Jason's riding. I think Jason was just taking that veteran aspect and fighting for his position as much as he could could as he should he was in fifth place in the race at the time he should not just be rolling over to anybody doesn't matter who it is Um, jet needs to unfortunately learn that in the 450 class that people aren't just going to move over for him Um, they are going to run him hard and block his lines and potentially move over on him and you know run him high in a berm this is going to be the norm in the 450 class but I can see both points of view that they were both upset with each other. Jet, obviously, that Jason was sort of running in and blocking those lines and taking the good lines so he couldn't get past him. Jason, that he got a bit of a rough block pass on Jet um, at the end that um, Jet gave to him. So I can see why they were both upset and then obviously having a bit of a helmet grab moment. That was a bit humorous, but from the AMA's point of view, finable because it's obviously bringing the sport into disrepute because it was caught on TV. But even if it wasn't caught on TV, it was in the stadium where all the spectators could still see it. So it's still unfortunately bringing the sport into disrepute and should be taken out of that. Obviously, if it happened outside of the grounds, that's a different story. But then it is a very different story. They're probably going to be in the police and in the news for that side of things. So, and still bringing the sport into disrepute. So, but the fact that it's gone beyond that and there's now apologies on social media, apparently issued by managers, not writers, and then so other writers talking about that fact, um, it just gets a bit muddy. And I'm not sure that this relationship is going to go too well moving forward. Um, so we have to watch that with interest. I'm very much myself looking forward to both of their interviews that I'm sure the TV crew is going to chase them for this weekend in Anaheim too, to get their opinions on both the situations and on each other. And I'll be interested to see how their responses go uh, and whether, whether they can both be men about it 
or whether they both have a grudge about it. We'll see how that plays out. And then who, if they do have a grudge, who saws whose front wheel off first? <laughs> we'll have to watch. Get the popcorn ready, people. We'll have to watch and wait and see. Now, moving on to something else a bit closer to my heart. We're into the injury side of things. We're not in the emergency department just yet, but we'll get there later in the show. But we're heading into a bit of a department of the press releases that have come out and I check these regularly I'm on the list for most of these teams nowadays uh, checking these things for updates on the riders and on obviously little bits and pieces that I can talk about here on the show now interesting enough the Kawasaki press releases have always been a bit of an interesting read for my side of things I've even reached out to them and asked them to put a bit more content in them because they've always been just a bit lacking in certain areas And from my description, I'd call it just a little bit with a one eye or rose-colored glasses on because they always seem to be on the positive end of things and eliminate, not just not mention, but eliminate certain aspects of what happened on an evening, which is obviously their right to do so. They're the ones putting it out and writing it. But I find that the contrast in that is the Honda press releases where they just include everything. It's fantastic. It's just a bullet point of this happened, that happened, that happened, that happened. We don't care the resp- reasons for or why they happen. They're just these are things that happen, and then they have a blurb about it from like a you know a quote from each of the writers and team manager etc. But the t- Cowie one is is different. Obviously, Max Volan went down um, in right after our last pro- podcast, I believe, midweek, and and has an injury. Now, unfortunately, that is not being communicated yet. There's been no mention of Max Volan in any of the Kawasaki press releases outside of the one that he was missing the round to confirm what his injury is and what the nature of the time is. Now, obviously, they might not have all those details at hand, but they will know enough that it's a hip, a knee, a ankle, a shoulder, whatever it is. I might have mentioned there that it was the hip on the first one that I went to because that is what we believe that it might be. But we don't have any confirmation of that. There's nothing to say that it's, oh, it's, we're investigating a potential hip injury or a potential knee injury. They don't mention that. They don't even have him listed in the press release at all this week. It's amazing that he's just been omitted from all Kawasaki communications, which is a bit of a concern for me. I would like them to just to update and say, Max Volan, you know, has sustained a potential hip injury uh, and he's undergoing investigations and he will be out for the foreseeable future. We'll update you further as we have more details. And then the following one, when they do have it in a week or two's time, Max has got a XYZ fracture of XYZ area. He'll be out for six weeks. We'll see him at this. We expect to see him at around this round or back for motocross or whatever it ends up being, right? Like just give a general point like I do in my press, in my emergency department article on fullnoise.com.au. Just give that general information about where they're up to and how that recovery is going. Whether they're using something like a slant board that we have here at the Always Moto podcast in our training regimes to help with knees and stuff like that to get stronger legs. Maybe he's using a slant board that we would like him to to find out about and they could talk about it in the press releases. We don't know. Um, But yeah, it's just amazing how they get omitted. But yes, look, on that slant board... Funnily enough, I was moving into my read there for the slant board guy and getting stronger legs on, on the on the slant board for your bike and all that sort of things and using the code always moto in lowercase to check out. But it reminded me that actually Chase Sexton this week was seen on a slant board guy's slant board training in the gym. So if it's good enough for the AMA Supercross champ, it's good enough for you people out there, but you need to use the code always moto so that you get a discount. And so that we've got because we've got that affiliate deal in place, it helps support us. So Check out Chase, um, hit him up. He's obviously using it. Um, maybe he knows a bit more about it, but it's a very cool piece of equipment, very simple. Um, but yeah, he's using it there. Now, the other thing that's interesting in that Kawasaki press release is that there is no mention of that Anderson versus Jet situation either. That's just omitted from the evening's uh, activities as well for Kawasaki. The other thing that's not mentioned, Adam Cincerulo um, was on an interview with Kellen Brower post-race. So well done, Kellen, for getting this because I hadn't heard it anywhere else at this point. Um, So well done, Kellen, of Racer X there. AC mentioned in his interview to him that he has a bit of an issue with a hand or finger injury that happened at Anaheim 1 when he was bumped into with, with Jorge Prado. Nobody else knows about that. It's not in any of the Kawasaki press releases. It should be. It would explain a lot. Adam hasn't really had great results. He's been kind of 
missing in action, I would say. For he's, There's not really a fast qualifier. There's no real heat race flashes. He's just sort of there and there in the background, making his way to the mains and stuff, but nothing crazy. And that probably explains why. But why wouldn't Cowie mention that and explain why their rider is not having a great time of it at the moment is because he's riding through an injury. And again, that goes to the point that then points out that, well, he's actually a pretty tough dude. He's riding through an injury. Well done, Adam Cincerulli. Everyone would get a bit more respect for him. But at this point in time, if that is a confirmed injury eventually, because even on that interview, it was sort of Adam didn't really know what he was saying about whether it was a finger or a hand, uh, which I found funny too. But... Yeah, it's just a bit bit odd that the Cowie doesn't mention it. Now, let's move to that Honda one. In the Honda points, they, they talk about everything. It's amazing. I, I like reading the Honda PRs. The interesting part that I picked up on this, and it sort of goes to show with what's happened since those mud rounds have kicked in, Lars's comment, Lars Lindstrom, the Honda team manager, points out that the team had very poor starts. That was his quote, very poor starts. And that for me, that hits the nail right on the head and exposes a problem that I think they've had for a little while. They don't have a good start map for a wet, great start. Outdoors, they obviously were killing it with Jet. Jet getting starts from anywhere, anytime. Didn't matter what he did, he got a good start. So far, you watch Joe Shimoda, you watch Jet and Hunter. They are spinning up excessively, bike going sideways even, off the grate when it's wet. They're not driving through the middle of the start straight. They're sort of rushing into the end and trying to take those inside gates, which is a horrible scenario. I don't like that. You always get pinched off. Unless you're the guy that gets there first, you get pinched off. Yes, you might be able to sneak around and come out mid-pack, but you're not coming out better than that. And they've been going for that as a safety route. I think Honda has a bit of an issue with these wet grates as a, and needs a different starting map that they don't currently have. Maybe it goes with something that I mentioned last week about the lower or the lowering or changing of the height of the start button, the whole shot button. Maybe it's still too low and that's what's giving a, to not enough pressure onto the rear tyre. But something maybe with the mapping that it's letting the bike get to a too high RPM and spinning that tire on that wet grate. Maybe they're not keeping the tire dry enough. Maybe they're not drying the grate enough. There's something that they could be doing probably to make this better. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting comment that Lars hit it on the head. So he's obviously aware of it. We'll have to see when they next have a wet grate if they've managed to do anything about it to fix it. Because two rounds in a row now, it hasn't been good starts for HRC. And this week heading to a triple crown at Anaheim too. Hopefully it's not raining. We'll talk about that later at the end of the show about what the forecasts are for the weekend. But hopefully they can get some good starts. They've got three main event race starts to get themselves in the mix. Um, only so much they can do once they get on the track. And if they had had better starts, maybe that Jet and Anderson situation wouldn't have occurred because he would have been in front of him if he had had a better start something to think about all right uh let's have a quick look here let's go into some other interesting notes this uh one is that the first three rounds of the series if we include this one this weekend uh, let's just go with the three the first three rounds we've had two right hand corners as a start corner the first corner right hander twice Two of three rounds. It's insane. We went for so long without having a right-hand corner, and then we have two in the first three rounds. But I checked the rest of the track maps, people. There's not one for the rest of the series. So go figure. I, I don't know what the go is there. They've just jammed them in at the start to get them out of the way. Maybe as a bit of a tester. Um, maybe they knew Jorge Prado was coming and they wanted to screw things up and maybe not get make it so he couldn't get as many hole shots. I don't know. Bit of a conspiracy theory, that one. That's my own theory. Um yeah, none for the rest of the season. And we never had any for ages in the series because that was deemed as being dangerous. So go figure. We've had two in the first three rounds. None for the rest of the series. All right, let's, uh, let's take a quick break here on the Always Moto podcast. We might actually just let you know that endurance recovery boots are still maximizing your training by getting you recovered before each and every session. Those boots are super easy to use. Pressure in the in the in the compartments make your legs relax. 
makes you feel a lot better. My ad, I've, my video is being used by them as an ad currently across their social media platform. So it's always funny when I see myself on an ad nowadays. Uh, so that's quite cool. But if you want to get a set of endurance recovery boots to maximize that training of yours, which you should be doing, use the code ALWAYSMOTO and lowercase at checkout to save. Uh, but check out those links in our bios on our social media pages to get yourself a set of endurance recovery boots. All right, let's take a quick break on the Always Motor podcast. We're going to come back. We're going to come back with the Always Motor contractor. He's back for this episode to talk some fantasy. And we're also going to have Lachlan, our fantasy maestro, who's managed to come up with our bootleg version of the Always Motor podcast fantasy league so that we can continue to do a Pulp MX version. Um, So we'll have these guys on. We'll be back with them. We'll talk some fantasy for the Always Motor Fantasy League. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Scott Meshi, number 411, and you're listening to the Always Moto Podcast. All right, guys and girls, joining us this week uh, to explain a little bit about this bootleg fantasy that we've got going on. We've got the man behind all of this, and we've also got our Always Moto contractor, Benny, on the line. We're going to have a bit of a chat about the Always Moto Fantasy Bootleg League. Um, we've got Lachlan on the line. We've got Benny on the line as well, the contractor. How are we doing, guys? Yeah, all good, Dave. <laughs> yeah, good, good. Good to uh, chat to you guys. Yeah, appreciate it uh, for coming on, Lachlan, and um, appreciate all the work you've been doing behind the scenes when um, Pulp pretty much not died, but had a heart attack at least, let's say, at the start of the um, season here. We're all sort of scrambling in the uh, places that you couldn't play Pulp MX anymore for fantasy things. And obviously, Benny's been a Rocky Mountain fan for a while. I don't quite like that one because he usually beats me in it. But um, we all sort of had that Pulp Fantasy League last year that we all had, you know, we had over 100 players in it, I think, Benny, at, at that end of that point. And, you know, sponsors and things all sort of associated with them. We didn't know what to do and... Lachlan came to the rescue and, and managed to make out what we've, I've been referring to as the bootleg league because it's a bit underground here um, and off to the side. But Lachlan, mate, you've, um, you've pulled something together for us and it's, it's a pretty sweet version of a Pulp MX fantasy for us here in Australia. <laughs> yeah, uh, thanks. I, um, yeah, I mean, when the news came out, I sort of was, I think, surprised at first as uh, most people were and... Um, went through the different stages of grief of, you know, acceptance <laughs> and everything else. And then I sort of thought, well, you know, like you said, there's there's the other game out there like RM, but I'm a bit the same as you. I seem to do no good at that. It's, it's all or nothing. And, you know, so much happens in those races that it's really hard to pick the top. And then I sort of thought, well, you know, maybe, you know, a year of not playing fantasy and just sort of enjoying the races for what they are would be good. And sort of, you know, let it go for a few days and sort of started thinking, you know, well, how hard would it be to, to kind of set something up just to kind of do a bit of a rough, rough cow can see if the guys that were participated last year were interested and yeah sort of thought about it a bit ended up actually contacting marks on uh instagram and he was good enough to get back to me and sort of said well you know that it didn't seem to have any issues with this sort of replicating the arrangement um obviously the uh there isn't really an alternative for us at the moment so uh yeah sort of got a a blessing i guess you'd say and um yeah just sort of sat down and thought I'd uh, have a bit of a go at setting up and plan to just sort of have, have a go and spend 20 minutes looking at it. And a few hours later, uh, there it was. And, um, yeah, pretty uh, – I didn't really know if it was going to work until we had the first round, but uh, has gone off without a hitch, I think. Had a couple of hiccups, but all in all pretty good. Yeah, look, I would have to say it's, it's pretty smooth from my side of things. Benny, I don't know how you've gone so far, but I was quite impressed. One, when I first saw it, even before it was in use, but um, – Benny, the entering of the, the tips and, and the scores and everything works pretty nicely. Yeah, well, I had the same thought as uh, Lachlan, you know, maybe just uh, give fantasy for a miss, <laughs> a miss for a year and um, see if, you know, we get an update next year and just play uh, the RM fantasy one. But uh, then the idea came into the group chat and I said, well, if you're going to do it, sign me up <laughs> straight away because I'm a sucker for punishment. Um, but, yeah, it's... It's basically exactly like you're on the website. We're just yeah in a in a different form, and we can just go in, click everyone. Everything's there, exactly the same as the website. So it's come up really, um, really, really nice. Hey, Lachlan, did you like? Obviously, you said it took a couple of hours. You built this. Did you literally start from scratch, or did you have something else that you sort of maybe part you know part built off of, or did, was this just a blank Google sheet essentially at the start, and you've just gone nuts on it? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, just from complete scratch. I, nice. um, 
Yeah, have um, I mean, I don't actually have an IT background. I'm a I'm an engineer and sort of did some you know use Excel at uni and sort of things just do. So I had had some experiences, some different formulas, but uh, yeah, sort of sort of built it up from scratch in terms of how it all pulls the scores together and things. But um, thankfully, the way the whole site is set up. Um, you know, the, the data is accessible and that was sort of why I reached out to Marks to make sure there wasn't any issues with us sort of using it. So that makes the, the, the week-to-week process pretty easy. But, uh, yeah, in terms of how it's all set up and the uh, way the team is selected and stuff on the on the sheet was from scratch. But, you know, thankfully it's it's um, really sort of set one round up and then just copied across all 17 and hopefully um, maybe into Pro Motocross as well, depending how Pulp go with getting it back online. Yeah, obviously they've had some interesting issues, it sounds, from the updates that I've been still listening to from them, but they, they, they don't sound like it's going to happen internationally. They might get a few more states of, of, of America playing, but yeah, I think for us internationals for a little while, we might be shit out of luck, as they say. So at yeah. least we have this. Um, obviously, like we said, um, Benny mentioned too, like, you know, there's a few other games out there. I just don't find them as interesting for some reason, and this one just seems to work for me in terms of, like, you're looking at the whole field. So that whole bit that everybody talks about with that, that was playing it, um, you know, you're actually looking for the different parts of the, the field. You're not just looking at the top five. You sort of get to know more about the other riders. And obviously for myself being, you know, contacting a lot of these guys these days to get updates from them, it sort of gives me a bit more understanding of where they've been finishing too because I'm paying attention to more than just, you know, who won the race last week, which is awesome. Um and Benny, you probably feel much the same in terms of, you know, you're looking at the whole field and understanding, learning more about the different riders as well. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, it, we've, the last few years playing it, you sort of look at people that you probably wouldn't have looked at, um, you know, racing the LCQ in both classes and, um, you know, getting angry when they, they don't get the points because you decided to, you know, go for a 16 handicap. Um, but yeah, it, it keeps, you know, you can still sort of look at those people and keep an eye on them. But, uh, in saying that, not that the, um, coverage seems to be showing many people in the LCQ back from fourth position this year, which is a bit disappointing, but, um, yeah, you can still keep an eye on it in the fantasy. Yeah, you definitely can. Now, Lachlan, did you have the first round? Were you like on stress watch or were you okay when this, you know, was happening for round one and you, you know, this had to sort of work at that point? Uh, well, I think the most stressful part of A1 for me was watching Max Miller in the last corner of the LCQ <laughs> going outside and just leaving it wide open. I'm not one for yelling at the TV, but, uh, yeah, sort of. Got the heart rate going, mate. Yeah, 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 in yeah that the family sort of looking at me, but, um, yeah, that was probably the worst part of A1 for me. But, um, no, it all went pretty well. I think I was probably more excited to, yeah, see um, – like I said, once we actually had some results, how it all worked out and had a couple of hiccups with um, getting the FFLs to, to work right. But, um, yeah, otherwise it went pretty pretty smoothly. I mean, pretty smoothly for me. I um, didn't have Hunter or Phil, um, so I didn't get caught up with either of those surprising DNFs. But uh, everyone else everyone else had at least one of them. So um, yeah. I promise that was not rigged. But, uh, <laughs> hey, who's pol- I just thought of that. Who's policing you on this side of things? <laughs> um, I uh, self policing, I suppose. Very but, honest uh, man I'm, over here, Benny. I'm, We've got to trust this bloke with our with our uh, winning league here. Well, he said to me through the week because uh, I I had a bit of a problem myself, and um, yeah, I accidentally picked someone because it's possible in this you know you can pick someone one week and then pick them again it sort of just goes off an honesty system and i accidentally picked ken roxon twice in a row and i said look i said i know how to change it it was too late (laughs) and you know it's just it's an honesty thing so we've all just got to sort of uh yeah (laughs) we got to yeah it's all right i just checked where he's where Lock- Lachlan's actually coming, and I'm assuming Lockie's your actual name in this league at this point, but uh, you're behind me, so it's okay for now. I'll, yeah. I'll let you. I'll let it slide. <laughs> yeah, I was um, quite worried that I might be sitting at the top early on and people <laughs> ask questions, but uh, yeah, like I said, I'll, uh, I'm about to, to, um, to well, try and sandbag too many rounds, otherwise I'll end up going backwards, but I had a shocker last week, so I think that should prove... Uh, but there's nothing questionable going on. Oh, what I hear, Benny, is he's just uh, he's just setting us up for failure. He's going to come home with you know massively at the end of the season when nobody thinks nobody's <laughs> watching. 
Well, he could go in and just edit some scores. So, you know, it could be possible. Oh, look, I think I might have to tag the con- make the contractor work here. Might have to get him to screenshot each week, make sure there's been no, no alterations later on. <laughs> uh, no, look, I, we trust no. you. Until, until you win, we trust you, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, that's it. I'll, um, well, if I do change scores, I might be dialing myself down just to make sure I'm a few points back in second or something just to, <laughs> to kind of fly under the radar. But, uh, uh, no, I, I, um, I think, yeah, as, as you sort of said, it can be changed at any time, and I was sort of expecting some people might be – trying to do some last minute team tweaks um, at, at or around cutoff time, but uh, haven't had anyone do it yet, which has been good. Um, yeah. Despite me incorrectly working out the, the cutoff time last week. So I've uh, allocated the timekeeping duties now to, to Benny to, to keep on top of me. Yeah. I did notice that post just before we got on here and um, look, that's, you know, that, that that's a part of the problem with um, the different time zones we're working over here that you'll probably get that wrong occasionally, but um yeah, that's minor in the big scheme of things. But um, look, I, I think for the fact of the, that this is all going through our Always Motor group chat, basically, uh, everyone who's playing is within that. Um, it's sort of, we don't know everybody personally, but everybody's been in that group for a while now. So, you know, obviously they're all just happy to be playing the game. So I think they're honest in that. But obviously as it, <laughs> as if we pick up more players later on, um, maybe at motocross time or something like that, you know, might be a bit different. But yeah. Um, for now, it's okay, and obviously we we lost a fair bit of players, Benny, from um, last year's setup because obviously it was very easy. We had the international players as well to sign up to the pulp thing, um, and we didn't get much chance to advertise this one starting out. We're, we're only down. How many have we got? I think we've got about twelve, thirteen, or something running at the moment, Benny. So it's a fair fair difference in numbers this year in the fantasy league for always moto. Yeah, well, we got. Um what did we get up to 110 120 whatever it was last year and then uh yeah it's pretty dis you know pretty disappointing but it is you know it is what it is and uh i think what we've got so far isn't um isn't too bad but uh yeah maybe before motocross we can yeah try and try and get some more people but um your favorite league the uh rm fantasy one we've got 30 people in that so um, you know, both leagues sort of have some numbers in them. Yeah, look, that's grown really nicely considering, obviously, we, I think it was just you and I in it last year that we had. We didn't actually advertise that one as such um, to join. Um, we kind of got forced to this year. Um, but, yeah, look, the, there's numbers in, in both sides, which is good. But, um, yeah, we'll have to see how we go. We, we'll get a chance, obviously, to see what's happening a bit more with the Pulp MX side of things leading into the outdoors. And uh, we might make a bit more of a push then. We'll start doing some Instagram posts as well. I was considering even still, as long as Lachlan's not going to shoot me with this one, but just still opening people up to come and join this one. Obviously, they won't be in the overall scoring as such, but they can still join it with each post that we make. I'm going to start making some weekly ones. So we'll, um, yeah, see what we can do and get those numbers back back to where we maybe had them before and just sort of help promote things here with uh, Always Moto and a couple of the sponsors in Coastal Motorcycle Centre and, and Helltech Australia is going to come back on board. They're still working on it. Benny, you've, and, and Lachlan, you would have seen um, Paul in our group chat. He's that running around with Helltech as his tag there. But he's, he's a good bloke, but he's also hasn't got his product out and about just yet but he's he's been good enough to um say that he's going to when it is available he's going to run back and check out the last year's league winner and um and and hook him up so it's um pretty nice to see that side of things and we're happy to have him on board with with the uh always motor fantasy league so that's awesome yeah no it's really good um you know we've i think there's a few people from last year that probably still haven't um even claim their prizes because you were having some difficulties with that. But yeah, for him to uh, you know say that he'll give uh, give the winner one of when they come out is um, yeah, it's really good of him to do that. Yeah, on that actually, there's still some slack asses that I've messaged that have never messaged me back. So if you want your prize, there's a message in your inbox. Um, feel free to re- reply to it. But for now, I'm not chasing you. I've done my part. You can come back to me. So it is what it is. But um, all right, so let's boys, let's let's have a look at this league uh, and the and the and like the bootleg league. We're not going under Rocky Mountain right this second, but the uh, overall so far, it's been a bit of a. I, I had a shocker at the opening round, um, but I've picked up myself since then. Um, but it's been a bit of a turnaround. There's been a couple of moves up and down. At the moment, the leader is on six twenty one points, and it's Dillaway out front. He's had a pretty consistent 
first few rounds. Um, Dobson one ten is running in second in six ten, and Jonesy seventy nine is in third on five sixty nine. But there's actually a three way tie. This is pretty insane. There's three. I don't know how three people have got exactly the same scores, but um, yeah, Jonesy, Mosebuild, and Mitch Jones are all um, tied for third. So it's pretty tight there. But Benny, where are you? Where are you on this scoreboard, mate? Uh, I think I'm in twelfth, uh, which is round about right for me usually. <laughs> <laughs> I was just setting you up for failure, but it, it, it is what it is. Um, but Lockie, you're doing not too bad, mate. You're uh, just behind myself. I'm on five sixty nine. You're at five. What am I looking at? Five. Oh no, I'm five forty one. Sorry, and then you're five twenty two. Um, so not too bad a scores for yourself opening up. Your last round was not so good by the looks of it. Yeah, last round was a shocker. I got a bit, bit, um, bit too eager with my picks and ended up with six guys in the main. So I'm yet to get eight in. So. Um, I'll need to probably tidy that up if I'm going to have any hope of, of that, staying near the top. That is a very difficult thing to do this year, it seems. Last year, I went all but one round in Supercross getting eight guys in, and that was only screwed on that one round by picking somebody who had that. It was um, Simonson got that uh, fake lap time, and then they cut him off from it. So he you know, got a shit gate pick, didn't make it, and all that. So that was the only one I missed out on. This year, I missed Hunter Lawrence as the first obvious one at the first round. Um can't, I, there was Dil, oh, Dylan Walsh as well at the first round. I did. I missed out on checking that he got an injury. Funny enough, I missed out on him getting picked for an injury. <laughs> Couldn't believe that one. Um, and I can't remember who I've missed at the next few, but I've missed one at each of the other rounds as well, um, purely just through stupidity and qualifying, only having two, like not having two qualifying sessions, which really sort of annoyed me because I haven't always been able to look right at checkout, uh, like at the closure time to make sure my picks are all good. So... It's a bit of a frustration on that side of things for me. Yeah, I think uh, I was a bit the same as you. I think we both got tempted into Derek Drake this week. But, um, oh, yeah, I think that's right. it was a bit of that going on. And I think, you know, the slot throws in a bit of an extra variable and you get a bit tempted. Last week I had five guys with a 12-plus handicap, which didn't go too well, but a few of them came off for me, which is nice. So, yeah, I think the, the first week only one team had eight in the main and surprise, surprise, it was the winning team. So it mm. goes to show that it's not necessarily about the, the um, biggest handicaps. Sometimes just the eight, eight in the main mantra will do just what you need. Yeah, definitely. Now, Benny, you've had some little uh, issues using this, the, um, the, the spreadsheet. What, what was your question for Lachlan on, on the technical side of things of entering your team, mate? Well, I've been doing it on the phone and you know, just now just looking on, on the computer for the first time, um, but I don't know if that makes a difference. But somehow I managed to put my team into round four and not to round three. And so I moved everything up, but then I was trying to clear round four just in case it like messed with, um, you know, because there was two teams just in case it messed with the system. And in that, I then accidentally picked Kenny because I was too worried about trying to clear the round four. I didn't look up and realise that I'd picked him the week before. So is there an easy way to clear the team for or to stop us from being able to do that? That's uh, just so it doesn't happen again. I'm not too sure about the clearing. I think, like you said, I think sometimes it can be harder to edit on a phone. But uh, I had it set up that you could enter and change your team for the current week and any upcoming weeks. But uh, what I'll do now just to try and help alleviate that issue in the future is I'll just change it. that You can only edit the current week um, on each week just to make sure that, um, yeah, no one's getting caught out with, with that, like you said, because I think on a phone it can be hard to see which week you're looking at. So hopefully that helps to uh, mitigate the issue from anyone else. But, uh, yeah, I think like we said before, I think you're getting the integrity award for last week for um, yeah realising your issue, but uh, not trying to do a sneaky change too late. So uh, what goes around comes around. So hopefully you get some good karma next week. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well I, I picked it. I picked Kenny again and I saw it and I was past the 12 o'clock or whatever time it was because I was too worried about trying to clear the fourth round. And I was just like, well, I've already picked him now. <laughs> it is what it is. He's, I can't change it. So, um, yeah, hopefully this week we might get some uh, good points. Is there – this is 
this is my dumb question, but is there a way at some point at 12.30 that you can actually just hide the entire game, like the entire spreadsheet? Uh, I don't think so. I kind of looked at what I could do in terms of completely locking it out, but there's no easy way. But, um, yeah, because it's on Google Sheets, um, it basically every time someone changes anything, it updates and kind of saves a version. So uh, basically the, the plan is, and I haven't had to do this yet because um, everyone's been very well behaved, but uh, if anyone is making changes after the cutoff, then I'll just basically wind it back to whatever the um, the data was at the time of cutoff. So yeah, it yeah. can't take it offline, but I can basically go back to whatever it was at the cutoff time. Yeah, nice. The hand of God can come into play and you can uh, just wipe yeah. that out. Yeah, nice, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Now, I've got a question for you too on that technical side of things. Um, and this is just those stupid things that you just used to. I always feel like, because you, you should be looking for a save button to make sure that the team's in. But like you just explained about the, the Google Sheets, it sort of just does it, um, you know, makes a version of it once you're done. You don't actually actually have to save it as such, do you, to, to block your team in. Once there's a name in the box, it's there. Yeah, correct. Yeah, auto saves. But um, yeah, I mean, if you're, I mean, if anyone's on sure at any point, just flick me a DM. I'm sort of happy to to um, put on the IT support hat. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen to too much. And hopefully, at some point, I'm assuming you're not going to be able to be sitting there watching it, you know, live as such. And hopefully, it all runs smoothly when those when those instances come about. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it has been pretty good so far. It's um, just a fairly quick exercise at the end of each week. But um, I somewhat selfishly don't look at the scores until after I've watched all the main events just to avoid any spoilers. So it means that some weeks it's probably going to get updated pretty late on the Sunday. But uh, we'll always get done. Uh, and that's from my side of thing. That's completely fine because I, I sort of have the same problem. You know, the group chats they're going nuts about the the event, and I'm not in front of a TV, so I'm not looking at the group chat. I'm not looking at socials for a good four or five hours, sometimes longer after, you know, after the event's been done. Uh, until I watch it, I'm not. Tr- I'm trying to avoid knowing what's going on, so I completely understand that side of things. And I think everybody can appreciate the fact that one, we've actually got this game going. Uh, and two, they can wait, you know, until Monday to or Tuesday to, you know, see what the score was. They don't have to know there and then. Uh, unfortunately, it's not Pulp MX. It's not live. It's um, it is just a spreadsheet run by one man, just one man. Lachlan is our man. <laughs> no, that's so it. that's all good, man. Um, now let's let's have a quick look, Benny. You're the uh, Rocky Mountain man. Um, how is the things in Rocky Mountain? I honestly have forgotten to pick twice now. It just hasn't even crossed my mind. So my score is terrible. I don't even know where I am. But I have looked up the uh, the leaders at this point. So who are our leaders, Benny? Have you got that handy? Um, so we've got Levi Lane on 127 points. Uh, Walsh Banger on 124. And I think it's Full Toe 29 on 112. And then um, 325 Motorsports in fifth with 100 have you checked out where you, where yourself is, Benny? You, you seem to like the Rocky Mountain game, so I'm assuming you're doing well. Well, you, considering that you said you just forgot to pick twice, um, I'm not even going to mention my score because <laughs> I've picked all three and um, I've got less points than you. Well, that's fantastic from my side of things. I, I'm loving it now. Let's let's get involved with Rocky Mountain fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lockie, are you playing that one too, mate? Are you in there? Yeah, I am. I... Uh struggle to work out how how the rankings work but i've just had a quick look i am 70 points so i'm he's got he's uh, in 17th position for 70 points that sounds yeah, okay. all right considering yeah it's almost the top half so that's pretty that's respectable i'm assuming benny we're in the very much the bottom half uh yes i'm equal last and uh you are three above me fantastic how yeah. how is it you've picked all three rounds and you are equal last uh so what have i got here i'll tell you um i've got 15 points at a1 uh san francisco i got 10 points and this week i got five points did you not have any of the people in the, the five uh, points like the five pick w- places well i had kenny in first position and that was re- looking really good at one stage uh, I thought I was, you know, going to do well, uh, but that was 
I had Kenny, Eli, Chase, Ferrandis, uh, uh, AP. So that's, I think I got, the only points I got were from him, I think. And then the wild card was Anderson, who got seventh. And uh, I think Hunter got seventh. So, yeah, that's, yeah, I think uh, AP was the only points I got. Yeah, right. That's where I don't like, that's where I don't like that game at all. At least you're going to get points. Like, you don't have to pick five or five or six guys in the end you're picking. But you're essentially just picking the top five, and it's pretty hard to do that week in, week out, especially with mutters. Um, that's where I find the this version, the bootleg fan f- version, much much easier to follow along with, Lachlan. It's so much simpler than Rocky Mountain for me. Yeah, I think the uh, the handicap approach that the, the pulp game has makes it a lot because, like we were talking about before, you can pick a a um, a privateer with a 16 handicap like I picked Stapleton last week and you know he gets through to the main and pretty much guaranteed to get a good good chunk of points um, and yeah like I said it makes the, the, the back half of the race a lot more interesting whereas yeah this is yeah, bloody hard to pick the top five especially at the moment yeah and this week will be just as difficult again being a triple crown so throw them all in a hat and just see what falls out at the bottom of it and that's the, probably be my picks if I remember to put any in at all that is so I actually think well, I would get it on Monday <laughs> Well, the good thing is you can. It's eight in this week, so no matter what, because it's a triple crown. So we can't, uh, you know, we can't not get points this week. Well, you'd ha- you'd have to remember that that I'm probably not going to pick after, like right at that point. I'm still going to probably pick earlier because I'm just that way inclined and come. <laughs> never remember to pick right, like re- double check my picks. So it doesn't this doesn't guarantee these things, Benny. Yeah, well, that's true. You got to live on the edge sometimes. You got to actually do some other things in life and remember to pick tip fantasy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all good. All right, boys. Well, look, it's been awesome to um, catch up with Lachlan and thank him for his efforts here so far in this always Moto Fantasy League and the, the bootleg side of things. Um, I hope he's okay. Actually, I should have checked this, Lachlan. Are you okay with us calling it a bootleg version, or should we put like Lachlan in the name to you know sort of in your <laughs> honour or? Uh, no, like, we can call it whatever we want, I think. <laughs> All right, we'll stick with bootleg for now until we come up with yeah. a better option. Um, but, yeah, no, we appreciate your efforts, man. It's, it's very much appreciated that it, it's happening. I honestly thought about doing it, and I went – there's no effing way I've got time to do that and do all the other stuff that I'm trying to do for the Always Moto stuff. So I'm like, when you suggested it, I was like, happily, yes, you can go ahead and <laughs> knock yourself out with that one. <laughs> I don't have time for it, so I appreciate you, you, you've done it. And, um, yeah, look, it's awesome. I'm, I'm sure everybody else is appreciative too. And, yeah, hopefully it just runs smoothly for you and you don't have to lose too much hair across the season. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I think. <laughs> no, awesome. Well, we'll thank uh, quickly thank again Coastal Motorcycle Centers and Helltech Australia for their ongoing support with it, and and you guys and girls out there for listening for being a part of it. If you're in the leagues, if you're not, send us a DM. Um, get involved with the group chat, and we'll get you into the the, the leagues. Um, you probably won't do well in our bootleg for the overall for Supercross, but we can get you a part of it, and yeah, start building it for um, building that up for our motocross side of things. So. Thanks for joining us, boys. Um, we'll, we'll leave it there. We'll take a quick break on the Always Motor podcast. Hey, this is Cole Thompson, and you're listening to Always Moto. All right, guys and girls, we are back. Thanks for sticking around on the Always Moto podcast. We are moving into the emergency department. That's the part you come to this show for all the time. We're going to head into it. We're going to just uh, check in on our riders. We had a few injuries last round in San Diego. We're going to check out their availability. Now, we don't know all of that at this point, but we'll give you that info as we go. Now, all of these guys are training hard, trying to be fit and healthy, ready for each and every round. Now, if you want to get into that sort of program and be fit and healthy and improve your riding, um, competitive Edge Performance They're the go-to provider of strength and conditioning programs Sports nutrition and on-bike coaching for athletes of all levels Whether you are just starting out or a seasoned pro It doesn't matter They have you covered They offer in-person sessions and top-notch online programs That are accessible anywhere, anytime Because they've got this tra- awesome training app If you want to join Competitive Edge Performance You should do it today Always Moto Podcast listeners They can get 50% off your first month on the training app using the code COMPEDGECOACH, that's C-O-M-P-E-D-G-E-C-O-A-C-H, all in capital letters. That'll get you that discount. But then you'll be, your training will be on point just like these pros. Hopefully their training's on point as well. Maybe they should be talking to competitive edge performance as well. Um, but yeah, let's get into this emergency department right now. 
the emergency department, all the injuries, all the gory details, and when they'll be back on track. It's the list you really don't want to be on. You do not want to be on this list. You never want to be on this list. But unfortunately, these riders continue to be on this list. Now, let's start off with the things to note because there's a bit of a... Unfortunately, the injuries this past week aren't necessarily going to be on the out following injuries in San Diego list because they're, we don't have all those details at this point. They're all still sort of on... Most of them, unfortunately, a few of them are on concussion protocols, so they're all pending that five to six day window to then get cleared, ready to race Saturday. So it's sort of, we obviously record this midweek. We're a little bit ahead of that curve. We can talk about what we know, but we don't always know if they're going to be there. So let's start off with those press day crashes. Uh, Jet Lawrence, that crash that he had trying to jump that quad or it's not even a quad. It was just a table onto a single, over two singles, and he just came up short. He did two and a half or three and a half, whichever way you want to look at it. I don't call a tabletop as a double. That's a single jump um, if you want to get into that argument. But he blew his hands off. I think that actually helped save him. I think he saw it coming. He braced. He managed to get himself off that as soon as it went sideways, and it was actually quite low speed. If you watch that takeoff, it wasn't like he was mid-rhythm doing it. He rolled one and then went for that section. So he only really got a little bit of speed. Uh, so he saved himself a lot. He managed to sprain his thumb or thumbs uh, and wrists because I dare say all of that took some impact. Now, I don't have any of this confirmed. None of the team has been re- replying to those sorts of things. Obviously, there's things that happen have happened since that are probably hiding them from the media, or not hiding them from the media, but they're not responding to all the media inquiries as they probably normally would. But yes, he obviously rode on Saturday night and was fine. Whether he taped it, and look, if he had a tape, if he had a sprained thumb, sprained wrist, taping those things are quite easy to do if you know what you're doing uh, in terms of them being minimalistic tape, but then it's also quite supportive and would have given him enough support to do what he needed to do. If it is just a minor sprain, grade one, grade two, he will be absolutely fine within a week to two. If he had torn it completely, he wouldn't have ridden at all. I doubt he would have made it through. So he's obviously got a minor, probably a grade one sprain. So it's one to two weeks. He'll be absolutely fine. He'll be doing therapy during the week um, just to make sure that it's settled probably tape it for a week to two and he will be absolutely fine so long as he doesn't have any major secondary incidents where he can potentially tear it further so at this stage jet lawrence will be absolutely fine but that press day crash wasn't the prettiest thing i've seen all week all right uh mitchell harrison team prmx rider um unclear i don't have details on what he's injured at this stage but he had a big crash on press day as well he managed to case a big quad not the one that jet was trying to attempt but a different one uh he smashed face first into his bars bounced off the side of the track i wouldn't be surprised there's a concussion i wouldn't be so surprised there's multiple other things that are sprained broken torn whatever you want to say at that point Uh, We'll find out more details on those. I've reached out to Mitchell, but no response at this stage. Mitchell's usually pretty good. He replies to us, but yeah, I dare say he's probably working through a few things at this point. We'll bring more information hopefully next week or check out the YouTube channel if we get it before then. All right, the other one that sort of popped up that wasn't from the race day as such, but it was prior to that, and we mentioned it earlier in the show, that interview from Kellen Brower on Race Direct where he mentioned Adam Sincerulo mentioned himself about an injury that he occurred with contact with Jorge Prado at A1. May have resulted in a broken finger or a broken hand, a bit of a pending on what that is. We'll find try and find out more. We've reached out to Team Kawasaki to try and find out if we can get confirmation on that. We'll see how we go. Also reached out to AC as well, but... Um, don't usually get responses from AC uh, in DM, so we'll see how we go with the team there to get some information on what's going on. The other three injuries that happened across the weekend, sorry, actually, one was um, another one from Press Day. Tristan Lane, uh, unfortunately, has had a concussion. He was attempting a tr- quad, it seems, as well, or well, going to attempt a quad, got mixed up on a different rhythm prior to that and managed to knock himself out or at least have a minor concussion. Now, So Tristan's on concussion protocol and like I mentioned earlier, the AMA needs to have a bit of a look at that, but obviously he had had a concussion bad enough that the medics attended and would have deemed him unsuitable to ride because he wasn't able to race the main event, like the Sunday, Sunday, the Saturday 
program. So he was um, put off before that from the press day incident. So he'll be able to be checked in and hopefully be able to ride if everything clears up in time by Anaheim 2. But there is always that chance that that minimum time frame that is required, that five to six days, is not able to be reached. So we'll have to wait and see if he's able to be cleared in time for A2. On to race day, there's two left. Braden Spangle, we've checked in with him. Privateer rider number 113 on a Yamaha. Unfortunately, had a concussion as well, also on concussion protocol. He has confirmed with us that he is aiming to be back for A2. But again, it's dependent on him passing that concussion protocol. Billy Leninovic, that 132, our oldest rider in the 250 field, who's come back just in his 40s. Um, previous main event winner in the 250 class way, way back in 2005, six, whenever it was. Um, Billy, unfortunately, had that crash on the finish line jump, managed to get wheel spin by the look of it and case and then bounce off and then sort of get landed on by three other guys, which was one of which was Braden Spangle. Um, managed to miss out and get definitely copping a wheel just to the you know body face while he was laying onto or sitting onto the finish line down ramp there. So he escaped some major stuff, but he is very sore. And sorry, if you've seen his videos this week of him walking into the therapy, he's not walking straight. He's a bit, bit hobbling along, unfortunately, for, for Billy. We've checked in with Billy. He's doing pretty well. He's doing his therapy. He's just generally sore. Uh, his hip, his back, all that sort of stuff. He's all just sore. Uh, but he's doing a lot of therapy, getting a lot of massages, getting some hyperbaric chamber in. And look, I said to him, basically, it doesn't matter if none of this stuff is really you know, evidence proven as to getting a quick result. I'd just be doing everything I could be to get myself as good as I could do um, even if it was just a placebo effect to make myself think that I was getting better so that I could try and get onto that race at A2. He's obviously, you know, just wanting to be a part of it again. Uh, but, yeah, he's doing all he can. He's hoping to ride press day. If he's not able to get into press day, he's hoping to ride sat day. And whether he's able to complete that or not, we'll have to wait and see. But at this stage, he's aiming to be on track for Anaheim too. All right, our out following injuries, um, San Diego, like I said, most of those we just covered in the things to note. Um, happened prior to San Diego, which was Max Volan we've spoken about earlier. We don't have details on that. Again, the Cowie, Volan camp, nothing's out of the, nothing's come out of them since then. Um, but we expect them to be out for a little bit of time. No other injuries that are out from that week. Now, making returns from this week, Travis Olander didn't ride uh, as we thought he might have at San Diego, but we expect him to be back for Anaheim too. All others at this point in time, we've checked in with uh, Matt Bell from the HBI Racing Team. He's the team owner there. Checked in about Ty Masterpool. He's not going to return yet at Anaheim 2. He's going to still miss Detroit. That At this stage, their aim is Glendale, but that is still pending. So, And we're going to try and chat with Matt next week uh, and see how things are going from him. And the team and Ty and everything else in between, Caden Braswell as well, who's also on a recovery list from from uh, an ACL repair, uh, who's also on Matt's team as well. So, yeah, hopefully we get Matt on. A uh, bit to talk about with him at this stage. But that's our updates. That's what we have this week for you in the emergency department. Uh, hopefully our injury insight from myself as a physio is taken, you know, taken reasonably seriously, but not also, you know, um, just reproduced. It's um, something that I work hard on to try and get these informations out and accurately out. Uh, obviously, we, like I said, we bring as much as we can, but sometimes we have to wait until the following week. So that's what we know at this point in time, people. That's what we've got for you. So thanks for licking, licking, listening. Got stuck on that word there. Listening to the Always Moto podcast brought to you by Leap Moto Australia. Um, we'll be take a quick break and we'll hopefully, like I said at the start of the show, we record in a bit of a zigzag. We don't always in a straight line. Hopefully, we'll be back with an interview with Doc Smith, um, privateer gas gas rider. And if we're not, we'll be back and we'll talk about some other stuff before we close out the show. Thanks for listening, guys and girls. We'll be back shortly. Aha, we forgot one on the list. It's written down and everything. We just worked straight past it. So we psych. We didn't go to break. We're going to go to a break in a sec. But Kevin Moran's, he also missed San Diego. Um, he had a midweek practice crash. We reached out to him, but he hasn't got back to us just yet, which is not like Kevin. He's usually pretty, pretty up on this sort of stuff. But Kevin has had a bit of a crash in the whoops, it seemed, and just completely 
sore, um, up and about, probably just got a bit of a sprain to his to everything. <laughs> um, but he is hoping to be back shortly. We don't have details on when he will return, but he was out because of that practice crash midweek. Um, ideally, nothing is broken. He was moving around pretty well on track, walk, and in his prep gear that he was... He had a very nice setup, unfortunately, that he didn't get to run for the retro round there at San Diego. Um, but he had a nice video of his team colors and everything. Uh, on that KTM bit there, but um, yeah, he didn't get to run it, unfortunately. So he did look all right in those sorts of things. We'll hopefully get a response from him soon. Again, we'll bring that update as soon as we have it. All right, let's, um, well, actually, before we go to break, let's fit in one more thing. Pivot Pegs. Pivot Pegs are supporting the show here with Always Moto Podcast. If you've ever worn out the soles of your boots way too quickly, um, maybe you've slipped off a peg and you've just you know thought that that should be a bit sharper. Maybe you need a bit wider peg to give you a bit more support in your stance and let you move about on the bike better. Then pivot pegs are for you. I've been running pivot pegs for years. They are very, very well put together peg, very presentable, very sharp, right? Not too sharp, but sharp, super wide, let you move around. They pivot as they name says. They pivot forward and back to let your boot sit flat on the peg more often than not and reduce the wear of your boot sole. They also help your leg positioning and help you reduce your fatigue of your legs throughout your ride because of that pivoting action. So if you want to get yourself a set of pivot pegs, you should go and check out their website, pivotpegswithaz.com. Get yourself a set of pivot pegs. All right, let's take a quick break on the Always Moto podcast. We'll be back with more. Hey guys and girls, I'm Gage Linville and you're listening to the Always Moto Podcast. All right, guys and girls, joining us this week on the Always Moto Podcast brought to you by Liat Moto Australia. He's made a couple of night shows this year. He's riding the number 464 um, Privateer Gas Gas. He's backed by Smith Pro Rodeo and Z's Main Street. It's Doc Smith. How are we doing, Doc? Doing great. How about yourself? Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm happy to have you on and ke- chat with you. But i got to ask straight off the bat, man, what is Z's Main Street and how the hell do you have a rodeo backing you? <laughs> so Z's Main Street is um, is it's a family burger joint in Winsboro, Texas that uh, I've known the owners pretty well and they're, they're gracious enough to help me out this year. And then Smith Pro Rodeos is I uh, worked for them over the summer and then... Uh, they uh, own the land that my training facility is on. Oh, okay. That's an interesting little connection there that they, yeah, the yeah. land and the track. Yeah, that's nice. Do you get, um, I, I gather the burger joint, but it's probably not on the uh, diet regime at this point of the season for you, but. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Definitely not. They're probably pretty tasty, but probably not this time of year. So maybe you can have one once the season's done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, how has. No, it's a. Uh... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So how has this, this season so far been treating you? Obviously came out west. Um, I think you said you're staying in California for this time period. Um, how's how's life out in California treating you? Man, it's good. I mean, I didn't have the uh, off season I would have hoped for, but uh, with like some health issues, I had a heat stroke and stuff like that. But man, I'm loving being out west. Uh, some great people out here to be around and then uh, – I'm getting to race my dirt bike always. Yeah, that's obviously always a, a positive side of things that you you're racing a dirt bike, and that's that's the cool part of life, isn't it? Oh yeah, I'm definitely living living the thing I've been dreaming of since I was four. Oh, that's really cool. So. And yeah, well done on being able to do that. But obviously, these first three races probably haven't been the picturesque scene that you've been hoping for in terms of uh, being a privateer and, and heading to a, <laughs> a race. You, you don't really want to see mud as a privateer. Not Maybe you do if you're good in it, but the after effects are probably not so fantastic for you. <laughs> yeah, no. I was, I mean, pretty normal, but... Uh, after that, yeah, it, it's not fun to be doing on the cleanup crew after that, especially when you don't have a mechanic out here. It's it's pretty rough, but uh, gotta do what you gotta do to stay racing. So, are you like literally doing all your own bike work during the week, like the wash and stuff after the event, just stripping down, cleaning whatever you uh, need to? That's that's all you. Uh, everything. I had my father help me a mechanic for me at. Um, a1, which I mean, there wasn't really much to do there. And then I didn't have anybody 
for San Francisco, but for San Diego, I had a buddy come out and help. And of course that helps a lot, but, uh, yeah, during the week and everything, it's, it's all me. Yeah. That's got to be a big effort at the moment with all that cleanup has, how far have you had to go into things in terms of, um, you know, pulling motors apart or anything because of, you know, I gather clutches have probably been fried, but everything else, how's it surviving so far? Um, everything else is fine. I mean, Wheelands Motor Works has an amazing, amazing motor that's really, really reliable. So, I, uh, I can't have, I don't have enough good things to say about them, honestly. Um, but yeah, they've they they're treating me very well. So, uh, yeah, not much on that. Just changing the oil. Blood lubricants helps me out with that. So, don't even really have to change it after these kind of hot motor weekends. But I do it anyways. Yep. And then. Um, but yeah, just really other than the clutch, haven't had to do much to these bikes. Well, that's that's better than I thought. Like I've been talking to a couple of different team managers and they've just been saying they've been throwing away parts. Obviously, these guys probably probably fanging the daylights out of them a bit, yeah. a bit more than, than you knowing that you've got to work on it yourself next week. But um, oh, yeah. But yeah, they're well, obviously then, throwing away lots of stuff. So yeah. yeah, if you're not doing that, that's, that's well, a good thing. I have thing. like uh, team rockets I'm having to change as well so them rockets on the weekend because honestly it wouldn't have been that bad but uh of course it rained for the next two days after that so we weren't going to be out in the rain washing a bike trying to get sick so i just destroyed them all all a lot of surface rust on all of it yeah oh. Oh. bit of coming and going oh, there good. but yeah just, yeah it is a lot of surface rust on everything, so I uh, just got to deal with that, put a new chain of sprockets on there, and she'll be good for the weekend. Yeah, nice. So how 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 confident are we? Obviously, these first few rounds have been a bit bit of a schmozzle in terms of not normal qualifying sessions. They've been reduced down to two. Oh, sorry, one, um, you know, and then obviously we're going into a, a triple crown format, so it's almost like it's all new again um, for round four. How's, how's things looking <laughs> this weekend? Are we confident we're going to get another night show in? Uh, I mean, as much as I'd love to say yes, we'll, we'll just have to see. I, um, I'm very confident in my riding this year. I feel like I've made a lot of prog uh, progression over the um, very, very short off season, uh, very, very short, like, prep season I got. But, um, yeah, what we'll is, what we'll is have to see? I, uh, I know I'm good enough to do it. I just have to, help. I just have to put it together myself. Just get out of my own head. Is it, is it easier this year having done those few events last year and, you know, just knowing how the format goes, knowing what to expect on race day, rolling into the stadium and, you know, seeing the tough blocks and all the people, you know, that you're lining up next to, has all that made it a bit simpler for you this year and, you know, maybe just made the, put the mind at ease a bit more about it all? Oh yeah, I'm a lot more comfortable this year than I have been the last, um, doing futures in 22 and then racing last year. Um, just be, I mean, you're around the same, same people, same faces are around you consistently too. So, um, they don't, they don't seem to stress you out as much whenever you're around them as much as we are now. Yeah, no, it's obviously just, I, I, I would think that that familiarity just makes a big difference and obviously just getting more comfortable and more laps. Like obviously each time you, you're turning a lap, you, you're learning something about yourself, your bike, the track, how to approach it. It's got to get easier. Oh yeah, it definitely gets easier. It's um, granted it never gets easy, but it definitely gets easier. <laughs> if that makes any sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It's one of those convoluted sort of sentences, but it does make sense. And yeah, it's um, it's all part of the, the experience, isn't it? So, but how how's the weeks been? Like, have you been able to get much riding in in between time between the events? Um, you know, to get a bit more confident comfortable on maybe you know california dirts and stuff how's the how's the complex you're staying at um well grindstone is just a place for you to to stay and work on your bikes and stuff like that there's no tracks actually out there okay so but, where are we um, we're within um we're within like 15 minutes of lake elsinore like like and paula and stuff like that so um we're not really having to drive very far to get some some time on the track but I, uh, I haven't got to ride as much as I'd want to just because um having to do things during the week and then like of course it rained the last three days so some people hopped on some uh some tracks out today but they uh 
it was a it was a private thing in the morning and so the track was going to be roached after so i decided not to put that time on the race bike yeah, have you only got the one bike with you at this point or is that the one that's ready to go at least at this point in time uh, so the race bike has a super cross suspension on it yep i have my mo- my practice bike with motor suspension i ah. um i just i didn't swap it over because i know i i'm just gonna get the one i'm gonna ride tomorrow and then go to the race so we're just going to ride one day on Supercross and then head out to the r- race weekend. Yeah, right. Private to your life. It's not as uh, smooth and as uh, comfortable as, as everyone sort of thinks it might be. You're, just, you're working hard and taking the opportunities when you can to get on the bike, <coughs> aren't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I haven't, I haven't had to do too crazy much. I've had it pretty simple so far this year other than just the mud and stuff like that. Um, so I... Uh, been pretty pretty blessed for that but um yeah it definitely isn't easy most of this time so what about the training side of things obviously you're out in an area that you're probably not familiar with have you managed to hook up with a couple of the the guys and and do some sessions or have you you know been soloing it in in a gym nearby or, or how's that all working out for you this in this sort of program too at the moment yeah so carry out a grindstone has actually been gracious enough to uh let me come out there and, and work with her group that she has out there. So, yeah, I mean, we're we're out there riding with the people that I want need to be riding with. Yeah, cool. So that's yeah. Obviously, there's some some speed in that too. Then. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean we have uh, Cole Bush is out there riding with me, and then um, oh my goodness, he just he's on Walsh's bike now can't remember his name to save my life max i just can't stanford oh yeah yeah, yeah. max stanford is out there as well so oh stanford yeah yeah no that's cool so there's a couple of guys there that are gonna obviously have some pace but like are we getting the, those those training off bike training sessions as well or is that part of what you're doing with those guys uh, i i'm just starting to figure out where and when i can go and stuff like that but uh i'm gonna be very very direct i um I haven't, but I haven't done as much as I probably should have, <laughs> but we're we're still be here for a little bit, so we're gonna keep her working. So that yeah, so you you gonna be out in the in the area for a bit longer? Then you there's um obviously a an East Coast round kicking off here next weekend, but then you're back into Glendale, isn't it? So you're still just gonna stay out for a bit longer? Yeah. So the plan right now is to um go to like we'll go to A two. I'll be here for the week off and then the, the rest of that week and then drive up to, um, oh my goodness. Yeah, the race in Arizona. So we'll drive from the race in Arizona back to Texas after that, but we're in California until that race. Yeah, nice. So you got probably, what, two weeks or so still to go. So, yeah, and then you've got yeah. a bit of a gap. Are you you what's, what's the plan for the rest of the season after that? Are we heading back one by one for the, the couple that are around? Like, they're all a bit more spread out after that, aren't they? But, um, yeah, you, you still get into the rest of the West rounds. Is that the idea? Yeah, that's the plan right now. Um, I mean, Smith Row Rodeos, they're helping me out a lot. And uh, I'm just, I'm just kind of listening to what they have for me to do and then go from there. Yeah, nice. Oh, it's good to have some backers and supporters and a little bit of freedom in this too, I guess. You know, being able to get to these things is one thing, but being able to, you know, go and stay somewhere for a little bit longer and, you know, just be comfortable in that environment too is, is awesome that they're allowing this for you. So that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's definitely – they've given me a lot of freedom and uh, that's, that's, that's amazing. They're, they're being super awesome with everything. But um, – so they, they back uh, Hillbush as well. Oh, yeah. So, so I think for some of these farther rounds, I don't know for sure if it's going to happen, but we might end up just connecting up together and going to those together. Just yeah. to save – everybody a bit of money <laughs> well that would be handy wouldn't it uh, that uh that uh private to your life the budget's only so big so yeah if you can pair partner up with <laughs> exactly. someone and take those longer drives together that's that's half the fuel bill isn't it oh yeah i mean my I, i'm on my own now financially as well so it uh it definitely it definitely makes it a little nicer whenever you don't have to uh 
pay all the fuel bill. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, look, it's a that's an expense that's massive at these this time of well, this time of year with the races, but just in this time of life at the moment, it seems that the fuel prices are ridiculous. So, yeah, it's um, oh, it's yeah. an expense, man. <laughs> oh yeah, it's definitely not as not as cheap as we would like it to be, especially here in California. I mean, I filled my van up this morning. Uh, and I had like a quarter tank left and I spent like $90. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty quick and easy. There's, there's, there's the money blown out the window. So yeah, it's not, not cheap at all. California is probably the worst for it, isn't it? Compared to how's Texas prices. Are they similar or? Uh, Texas prices are like when I left Texas, the price of fuel was a uh, $3 and 23 cents. And here it's like $4 and 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> per, per gallon so oh you gotta love that california uh that california higher prices and taxes and yeah it's fantastic yeah oh, it's wow. crazy honestly well yeah look partnering up with someone for a couple of the rounds to split that expense would probably be a fantastic idea but it also <laughs> might just make things a bit easier in terms of you know having a couple of people rolling around it might be a bit more fun as well so see how that all plans out man Oh yeah, we're we're I'm I'm ready to see how everything ends up for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, nice. Sorry, I'm I'm out we're out here playing golf as well. So. <laughs> Are you doing you definitely live in the moto life. You found a golf course in between the races. That's how it goes, isn't it? Oh yeah. I mean I just got back into it after like eleven years of not playing, so <laughs> we're struggling but Is the swing a bit rusty or not, how's it go? Uh swing's very rusty. I think we're on a par four right now, and I'm in. Sorry, I thought he just had a crazy shot. But uh, we're on a par four right now, and I'm on a bogey at the moment. So, and I still have about mm, 75 yards to the pin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not looking promising yeah. for a good score on this on this round by the sounds of it. So, <laughs> not at all. Oh, look, man, that's, look, you're enjoying the life. That's a good thing. Obviously some relaxing, but um, yeah, obviously business this weekend in terms of the race day, but we hope to see you in that um, night program. It's obviously a bit crazy in terms of qualifying through for it in a triple crown, but ideally it all goes well and you can uh, experience another part of the Supercross life, man, and hit a triple crown. Oh yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to put myself in one of these. I know all it takes is one good lap, but of course, Everybody knows that, so <laughs> we'll just have to see how she goes. I'm I'm very confident in myself. I know I can do it. I just have to mentally get past that that little wall I built up, I guess. Yeah, you just how's it go? You just got to do it once, and then you know you can do it. So maybe this is the weekend where that's the one. So hopefully it works out for you, man. I appreciate it, David. Well, look, appreciate your time today on the Always Moto podcast brought to you by Liat Moto Australia. We'll um, check out the results and hopefully we see you on the TV this weekend at A2. Um, good luck, Doc. Thank you, David. No worries, man. Talk to you soon. You as well. What's up, guys? Kevin Moran's here and you're listening to the Always Moto podcast. All right, guys and girls, thanks for sticking around on the Always Moto podcast brought to you by Liat Moto Australia. We're about to roll out of this thing, but we're going to give you the regular updates that we do at this point in the show about how to watch uh, on the Australian times uh, and a bit of a weather update. So this week's race back to Anaheim 2 for the Triple Crown. Um, race day live in Australia on the East Coast, New South Wales times, by the way, just to provide a Queensland, you're on a different schedule as per usual. Uh, race day live is going to kick off at 7 a.m. as per the Super Motocross app, and racing is going to kick off from 12.30 p.m., and this is Sunday, people, Australian time. Um, so check those things out there for yourself. Um, obviously, the Fantasy League, the Bootleg League, is going to uh, lock off at 12.30 p.m. New South Wales time as well. So that'll be when you need to be sitting on the couch watching the racing. Now, weather for Anaheim 2. Obviously, we've had these couple of crap rounds in a row, San Fran and San Diego. Ideally, there's no rain in this forecast at this stage. There is a 0% chance of rain for Anaheim, but it is only going to be 10 to 25 degrees. Keep in mind, it is winter over there, but this is California, uh, so it's a little bit warmer usually. By the time the night show is going to start, it's going to be about 22 degrees. Uh, interestingly, they say in Anaheim that the moisture comes up in the evenings, and it does. There's a bit more, obviously, the California desert. Once the, the night comes, fall comes through, humidity kicks in. So throughout, throughout the day, it's 38% humidity, which is pretty low. 
but by the time the night program kicks off, it's gone up to 52% and it gets higher as the night program goes on. So hence the moisture on that top level. So maybe the track, that's where they get those comments about the track being slick in the evening as the night progresses because that moisture just sort of sits in the top layer of the dirt and you get that shiny line that they get at Anaheim um, for the Supercross events from that California dirt. So interesting stuff to know there. But, yeah, that's the weather update for Anaheim too. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that hasn't changed or and doesn't change in terms of wet weather because that would just be another nightmare for all these guys. As we were just talking to Doc, he's probably looking forward to not – having a wet round as a privateer as well. So it's just more work for him, basically more cleaning. All right, great show this week, guys and girls. Thanks for listening. Thanks for sticking around and being a part of the Always Moto system here. Don't forget to get those T-shirt orders in. Email info at alwaysmoto.com. Follow us on social media to stay up to date with all things moto, particularly the injuries in our sport. Um, so search Always Moto, follow and subscribe. Leave a feedback if you can. And guys and girls out there, share the page, share the um, YouTube channel. Get some more people listening. It will be very much appreciated on my end. Make sure you subscribe to that podcast feed, um, YouTube channel, all those things. Leaving thumbs up, please. Just be a part of it. Engage. Leave a comment on the post. It, it, it's part of being in this motor community. Jump in there. Be a part of it with Always Moto. Don't forget to check out our written articles over at fullnoise.com.au. But that's it for another show. Thanks to Elite Moto Australia, Pivot Pegs, Competitive Edge Performance, Slant Board Guy, Endurance Recovery Boots, and Tech 167 3D Printing for the show support. And if you haven't already got something from Tech 167, you should do. You need to get something cool printed up for your bike. They've got brake handles, fu- threaded fuel funnels, not fuel funnels, oil fill funnels. They've got all sorts of stuff they can print for your bike. So check out Tech 167. Let them know you're a listener and they'll hook you up with a bit of a discount as well. Thanks for you guys and girls for listening. Thanks to the wife and kids for letting me get this done. Remember, you've got to be smooth to be fast because if you're not, I'll probably be seeing you deep in the emergency department, maybe even the clinic having strapping tape thrown wherever it will stick.